This video provides an introduction on how to set up a secure Internet of Things, or IoT, cloud server. Most IoT cloud server solutions, whether they provide ready-to-use hosted services or not, are based on a standard virtual private server, or VPS. Most developers probably think of services from Amazon or Microsoft Azure when considering the service side of their IoT solution. These high-end services are great if you need to scale up to millions of connected devices. However, for small-scale operations and DIY projects, a low-cost VPS is more than adequate. This video is accompanied by several written tutorials that you can find by navigating to the Mako server site and clicking on the IoT tab. We will not follow all steps, but we will rather focus on setting up the actual cloud server solution. Refer to the written tutorials for the additional steps that you must perform in order to set up a complete secure IoT solution. Click on the link Cloud Server Tutorial. This takes us to the blog post that explains how to set up the server side for the IoT solution. The first step we will perform is to register a domain name. We will select a free domain registrar, but you can choose any paid for solution if you require a domain name that ends with .com or any other non-free top domain name. Sign up for Freenom if you choose a free domain name. Since we have already signed up for Freenom, we can directly register a domain name. Notice that we select a domain name ending in .tk. .tk is one of several free top domains. Enter the domain name you want, and if it is available, complete the registration process. We also need to configure the DNS for the domain but this will have to wait until we have signed up for a virtual private server service. Let us navigate back to the IoT Cloud Server tutorial. Scroll up to the instructions for signing up for VPS service and click the Barry link. The Barry website opens in a new tab. Scroll down and click the Blueberry plan. The host name should be the name you register on the Freenom website. In our case, the name is megatoaster.tk. We will not be using the NS prefix. Thus, you can fill in any name in these two fields, but note that they are required. The password is for the VPS's web-based control interface and for logging into the online server using SSH. On the shopping cart page, click Checkout. On the Shopping Cart's checkout page, fill in all information and select a payment method. Click Complete Order to finish the registration process. After some time, you will get an email from Barry Servers with information that enables you to log into the web based control panel and to remotely log in to the virtual private server by using an SSH client. Notice the hostname is set to megatoaster.tk, but this domain name will not work since we have not set up the DNS on the Freenom website. Copy the server's IP address and navigate to the Freenom website. On the Freenom website, navigate to My Domains. Click Manage Domain on the domain you just registered. Click Manage Freenom DNS. Paste in the virtual private server's IP address you copied from the email. Click More Records and paste in the IP address again. The name field should be www. This makes sure your server can be accessed by either domain name or www.domain name. Click Save Changes. Open a command window and enter the command ping domain name. Note that it may take up to 48 hours before the DNS for your domain name works, but it usually takes just a few minutes. As you can see from our test, the domain name is working as it looks up the IP address of the VPS. Navigate back to the email you received from Barry Servers and click the Control Panel Access URL. Log into the Control Panel by using the credentials provided in the email. 
click the Reinstall button. Scroll down to Debian 8 Minimal and select it. Scroll down to the end of the page and click the Reinstall button. The reinstallation process takes a few minutes and is usually much faster than the 10 minutes stated on the control panel. Let us navigate back to the IoT Cloud Server tutorial. Scroll down to the instructions for installing the Mako server and the SMQ broker. We will use the automatic option in this video. The exact installation options are explained in the tutorial. All you have to do is copy the commands by clicking the list of commands and pressing Ctrl-C on your keyboard. The next step is to connect to the online server using an SSH client. We are using PuTTY on Windows. Start PuTTY and enter the domain name you registered. Enter the credentials provided in the email you received from Barry Servers. The user is root, and the password will be the password you set when you signed up for the VPS service. Paste in the commands you copied from the IoT Cloud Server tutorial. This will start the Mako Server installation process. Enter a username and password when prompted. The username and password protects the WebDAV instance that is automatically configured by the installation script. The installation script creates the file mako.conf. See the Mako Server website for more information on the Mako Server's configuration script. The Mako Server will be running as a Linux background service when the installation script completes the installation. We can now verify that the Mako Server is running by using a browser and navigating to the registered domain name. You should see the SMQ LED IoT Demos web control interface. You should see the message, No Devices Connected. Let's perform a quick test to verify the SMQ IoT Broker is working. We can download the SMQ C Client Library and a simulated version of the LED demo designed to run in a command window. The C code can be downloaded from realtimelogic.com. Click on the DOS batch file link to download a script that automates downloading the source code and the tiny C compiler. The batch file automatically compiles the code as soon as it is downloaded. We must make one modification to the code since the SMQ LED example code is set up to connect to Realtime Logic's public SMQ broker. We can use the included TinyC compiler to compile our modified code, but the compiler needs a few command line options to compile the code. The easiest way to compile the code is to edit the download batch file. Open the batch file in an editor and simply delete the first part of the batch file that is set up to download the code. Navigate to the SMQ LED examples directory and open the example source code in any source code editor. Scroll down to the source code line where the broker's domain name is set. Change the domain name to the domain name you registered and save the file. Navigate to the directory where the batch file is and run the batch file. The batch file you edited will now recompile the example code and start the example. The example code now runs in a command window. Notice how the web interface immediately changes the second we started the simulated SMQ LED device example. We can now click the LEDs in the web interface. Notice how the simulated device prints out the commands immediately after we click the LED button. JavaScript code in the web interface sends an SMQ message to the online server, which in turn redirects the message to the simulated device code. Notice how the interface is immediately updated when we exit the simulated device.
Let's restart the simulated device by clicking on the executable we produced when compiling the code. You can see the web interface changes as soon as we either start or exit the simulated device. We have not shown how to install an SSL certificate in this video. For more information on installing an SSL certificate and connecting a real device, such as an embed board, to your online broker, see the tutorials on the Mako Server website and watch the video IoT Security Creating X.509 Chain of Trust.